Hey, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Joseph Kappas, and today I am joined by my guest, Dr. Molly Parker. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so, Dr. Parker, um, for those of you, or for those of our audience who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I am um, a physical therapist by trade. Um, but back in 2011, I was working in orthopedics and had gone out, gone out for an evening of you know dinner and dancing with friends, and ended up getting hit by a car as a pedestrian. The cab driver had fallen asleep at the wheel, and he went through the crowd and hit myself and several other people. And kind of as the story goes, I felt really lucky, um, and I remember saying to myself, "I just had a concussion," and I really didn't understand what concussions could turn into. And even though I was a fairly recent graduate from school, we didn't have um, any concussion you know, education. We pretty much went through severe TBI and that was about it. And so I fell into that sequelae of post-concussion syndrome pretty darn quick, but nobody really knew what it was. So I kind of went from person to person. I could feel myself getting worse, but I was um, fairly cognitively compromised at the time, which I didn't really realize, but I was having a lot of headaches and memory issues and um, feeling kind of off and foggy. And it was vestibular stuff, but it wasn't in the true sense like I had been taught. It wasn't like the spins. It was just this kind of funky off feeling. So I ended up, you know, spending the next two years slowly losing my job and losing everything I'd worked for. I said I got more and more symptomatic. I developed a movement disorder, sort of personality changes, speech issues. I mean, you name it, I kind of had it. Um, and it took two years to get a diagnosis and then another year to find the first healthcare provider who knew anything about concussion and had one validated my symptoms, but two had any sort of treatment to offer whatsoever. Um, but by that time it was kind of too late and everything had gone from bad to worse and I ended up moving home. Um, I was pretty much bed bound and I had this pile of symptoms and I was told this is going to be it forever. I remember thinking to myself, this can't, this is a functional injury. This can't be the, there has to be things that we can do for this. And so thus started, you know, the last five years of seeing multiple people and starting to dig my way out. And I've improved probably about 80% symptom wise since that time. Um, but I'm still getting about 20% of a day. So we're working on the last bit of stuff that we're really hoping translates into function. But yeah, just, I'm still not back to work yet, but the thought of people not having information that they need and that would have changed my life really bothers me. So I've been, um, just active on social media because that's a way that I can still, um, have my health and reach people and get, you know, information out and, it's been wonderful and the people there are wonderful. And so it's just been kind of a whole new career trajectory for me. So that's what I'm doing now. Rehab and Instagram for the yeah. most part. Yeah. And that's, um, I told you this uh, earlier, but that's how I heard about you. I actually have multiple patients who follow you and have, you know, love your page and you offer so much in the realm of advice and, you know, just practical steps that a lot of TBI survivors really can benefit from so yeah it's it's really yeah. great yeah um so you said you had been dealing with this or you've been dealing with this for about five years now is that right uh about nine years i got nine worse years. for four ended up kind of bed bound and plateaued and just kind of that little voice being like no this will not be it for me and so that's been really the last five years that I've started to kind of make progress exponentially so in the last three. Mm -hmm. So now it's just kind of, we've gotten a lot of stuff, you know, that was never supposed to recover is now working perfectly, if not better than normal. Um, so it's just, we're down to the last few things, but it's just, it's been a ride. Yeah. For sure. Um, would you mind talking about maybe some of the things that you tried, some of the things that helped and maybe you know, I'm sure you've tried a lot in the past nine years, so yeah. we can talk about yeah. that for a while. Yeah, I've, 
ended up at this point seeing, I've seen 90 healthcare providers, which is absurd. And I think the first probably 40, um, it was just, you know, it's psychological, it's, you know, you're fine, kind of a walk it off type mentality um, that was really, really maddening. And then I kind of started to meet people who really knew what they were doing. And I think just having people to validate my symptom profile alone um, was in a sense therapeutic. Um, but then, I mean, I've had everything under the sun. So I've done, you know, vision therapy, which was really helpful. I'm still working on vestibular therapy, which my vestibular system is doing much better. Um, the movement disorder was um, the most challenging and still is the most challenging. So I've worked, there's a great group, if anyone has issues with that, there's a great group at UCLA um, that works with UCLA called Reactive. They're phenomenal. And then I've also found functional neurology to be super helpful um, with that. So I've worked quite a bit with Dr. Zelensky in Oregon, who's amazing. Yeah. It's, you know, you go through years and people look at you like you have two heads and they can't possibly give you any explanations. And then you meet people like, um, reactive or Dr. Zelinsky and it's just like, oh yeah, and this is what we do, and it's easy breezy. <laughs> and so I just, I always tell people, you know, even if you've seen multiple people, there's, you keep trying because there's going to be someone who that's what they do and they get it. But I think for me and for so many people that I talk to every day, it's just this TBIs are so multifaceted and concussions are so multifaceted and it takes um, you know, a, a few cooks in the kitchen to really be able to manage all the symptoms properly. And I think if you haven't had someone to guide you through that or give you good information right off the bat, you end up with all these scattered treatments and it kind of helps a little bit. But nothing's mm -hmm. cohesive and you're managing it all on your own. Um, and I think that's what I fell into for quite some time. And then over the last maybe two years, I feel like I have more of a structured um, group of people working together to kind of cover all the bases. And so now we're working, I'm doing functional neurology, um, physical therapy and aerobic training is what I'm working on. That's most helpful for me right now. That's great. And that's, I know one of the biggest aims of your Instagram page and one of the biggest aims of uh, this podcast is to help kind of fill in the puzzle pieces of the different therapy options that are out there because this is such a mm -hmm. multifaceted you know, disorder that, you know, people really need multiple, multiple hands to help, you know, heal. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, so Dr. Parker, um, what would you say is the most frustrating thing about dealing with a TBI? A lot of times, like you said, people look at you like you have two heads. Not many people really can empathize unless they're also in your shoes. So what are some of the things that you found really difficult mm -hmm. to deal with uh, day to day? Uh, I think the day to day is it, it's, it's the case managing essentially, and it's the explaining. So initially for myself, and I hear it from many other people is that people have these injuries and we expect them to be able to explain it to their family and their coworkers. And a lot of times to their doctors, um, with, and it's something that they just quite frankly don't have the language for. And I find people misinterpret, you know, fatigue as the fatigue, fatigue a healthy person experiences. Or, you know, I walk into a room and forgot something. Oh, that happens to me too. And, you know, you and I both know, you know, memory problem is quite a bit different than being forgetful. And a speech problem is quite a bit different than, you know, stumbling on your words. Um, so I found that really frustrating. And then I also found just in essence being my own case manager. So having to do the research, research on my own, kind of having to find the treatments on my own. I think of those 90 healthcare providers, I found almost all of them. Um, I started towards the end, I started to meet people who really knew what they were doing, who could connect me to other people, but it was something that I had to do that all on my own, and then I had to make them cohesive all on my own. Um, and that was really frustrating, and I still, and I think it's a little counterproductive to recovery because rather than kind of being able to you know, take a step back and know that someone's going to guide you through it. So you don't have to do any of the worrying. You're really stuck in this position where you're having to manage a lot of that on your own. And so I think like clinics like yours or people who like get it are just worth their weight in gold, not only for the treatment options you offer, but there's something about taking the weight off people's shoulders so that they can focus on their recovery without having to do all this like back office stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably one of the, the biggest frustrations. Okay. 
And how how big would you say family support is? You you had mentioned you know having to go through a lot of this alone, but uh, how big is family support? Mm-hmm. I think having anyone who kind of walks through it with you is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, the first probably half of my recovery, I was living in San Diego at the time. I really didn't have much support, and then now I have, I'm surrounded by people who really get it and are super supportive, and I have like this tight core circle, and the experiences of those two things are wildly different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there was that transition, and there's transitions for people where, you know, we talk about having new boundaries and expectations so that you can hold space for your recovery, and you know, learning how to plan and pace your day and whatnot, and how hard that is for the people around you to understand because you look so normal um and so there was that transition period of like here's what you could expect from me before and you know i was working two jobs and active and out and about and now i'm really struggling with like basic things and if you rush me in the morning i'm gonna have like the personality stuff is gonna kick in and so it was getting people kind of used to the temporary new you kind of thing and there were some people that didn't do well with that at all that aren't really in my life anymore. And there was others that they might not have understood right off the bat and who does, but they were able to grow in their understanding. And most importantly, I tell people like, you don't have to believe or understand it. You just have to believe them. Mm-hmm. Um, having the support where you're not having to explain yourself or prove that this isn't what you want is just huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Then that was my, one of my next questions is I was going to ask, you know, what are some good, or what are some good ways that patients or people dealing with this can approach their family members and their loved ones and um, really help them understand what they're going through? Because a lot of times it's hard to understand unless you're, like I said, in your shoes. So, so th- yeah. Yeah, totally. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as the, uh, the climate goes with healthcare in general and TBI, how Mm -hmm. do you feel that, you know, your standard medical practitioner is equipped to understand the symptoms that patients are going through, especially when they're unresolved for nine years plus? Yeah. Um, my, in the beginning of my experience, it was abundantly clear very quickly that the bulk of the medical community not only didn't have the education they need, but they weren't aware that there was anything more to be aware of. And I've seen that shift quite a bit in the last, you know, nine years or so where people are aware that there's more to them for the most part. Um, I think there's some people who've done just fantastic of really getting themselves educated or at least being able to screen um, and to get people to the right help quicker, which is phenomenal. Um, they're still, we're still dealing with that gap of, you know, I still hear from a lot of people that they're going to see so-and-so and and they're being told to rest like indefinitely and they're being told to stay in a dark room or they're being told there's nothing they can do and they need to live with it. Or they're being told like they need surgery for things that like aren't surgical in my opinion. Um, so it's still, we're still like kind of in that in zone where now we know there's a little more to it, but getting everyone caught up. Um, is tough, but I do think it's easier to get to people that know what they're doing, and I do think there's more of them, and I think there's people really working hard actively to make sure that they have, you know, the skills for these people, which is beyond appreciated, and so, yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, If you were to give advice to somebody who has a recent concussion or is somebody who's dealing with a concussion for a long period of time, what are five good mm-hmm. action steps that they might be able to take now to kind of get themselves mm-hmm. back on track or in a better position? Yeah. So I think for, we'll start with acute. So for acute, it's first action step would be getting yourself in for an evaluation right away with someone with current and advanced training in concussions. Obviously, if there's like red flags, you know, get to the emergency room, but you want to be evaluated within 24 to 48 hours. And then next step would be, you know, that 24 to 72 hours of symptom limited rest. And then the biggest shift that we've seen in concussion recovery is we're shifting to like this active return. So we're not doing like lay in a dark room and don't come out. 
we're doing, okay, let's start to progress you in the life, both physically and cognitively. Um, and this looks different for everyone, which is why it's so important to be guided through that um, in a way that's going to be conducive to your symptoms. And we find that if we get people, you know, moving and around friends and family and work to the degree that they're able to, that they do much better with that. Um, so then once they have that, it's the kind of fourth thing is making sure that they realize that their symptoms are going to resolve before their brain recovers. So if there's someone that maybe they're an athlete or they're going to be in a situation where they might get a second concussion, they could also be like, you know, a police officer or a construction worker or a firefighter, you know, anything where you might be in a position that recognizing your symptoms are going to go away first, but you still need to make sure your brain's fully recovered before you're in a situation because you're still fairly vulnerable. Um, and then the last thing is just to know these things are treatable. And most people, if we, you know, we educate them properly, we get them through properly, they do quite well. Um, and even if there's someone that say, you know, you're 10 days out or more, you're still having symptoms, we just start to treat you as if you're going to have, you know, prolonged symptoms kind of proactively. And we go from there. So that's kind of their five. And then if you're someone who has prolonged concussion symptoms, whether you're like a few weeks out, a few months out, or you're someone like me, I think first thing is that these things are treatable. So I don't, I'm, I'm not in the camp of like, get used to it. I'm in the camp of you can make progress no matter how far out you are. Um, and that they don't have to be like super arduous necessarily. Like when we match people with the right treatments, they do pretty well. Um, the second thing I would say is learn how to plan and pace your day. <laughs> people tend to either, and I totally made these mistakes. I initially, my injury, I like plowed through, which obviously wasn't helpful. Or I see, I see people who are like terrified of their symptoms. So they do nothing. And it's trying to find that balance of, you know, challenging yourself enough so that you're able to make improvement, but also staying within your capacity enough. So you're not just tanking yourself over and over again. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's just such a learning curve for people and no one gets it perfect. So if you're like, I haven't figured it out yet, no, no one's figured it out perfectly. Like everyone has days, um, but learning to plan and pace and then getting into targeted treatment. So we match who, how we should treat you with what your symptoms are. So I, you know, I have a thing of that on my page. We'll be launching a program soon that has, that talks people through that, getting to some, somebody like you who can talk them through that, but just understanding kind of what symptoms you're dealing with, who treats them and getting on a structured plan. And then the next thing I would say is getting kind of like the supports, what I consider brain support. So like your diet and your sleep and having someone guide you through return to exercise and stuff like that. And then the last part is just kind of the social. So like, you know, have people on board. If they, if you need help getting explained, they can go see your doctor. They can order a book. They can follow someone like me. They can come to an appointment with someone like you and you can like talk them through it. Um, and just keeping that kind of social part as strong as you can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that... Right now I feel like everyone is in like post concussion mode. Cause everyone has to stay home. <laughs> yeah. That's... Like, all I... the people I talked to are like, we've been training for this. Yeah. Like, we know the drill. Yeah. And but, everybody can yeah. start to empathize now <laughs> a little bit. Totally. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so obviously, um, you probably get a lot of questions from your followers and whatnot. Uh, what would you say is the biggest or most common question that you receive? Oh, that's a good one. Um, it's either it's something along the lines of like trying to explain it to people like they're, you know, a spouse or a parent or like just the frustration with like not feeling like it's understood and they feel like they're going a little nuts. Um, or it's just like, I have these symptoms. I know they're treatable, but I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know where to go. I don't know who treats this. I'm confused. Um, and it is confusing. There's so many avenues to treat this which is great but if when you're trying to pick it's like you don't know where to start or people don't know where to put their money if it's really limited um, which for a lot of people it is and so it's it's explaining it and it's like what the heck do i do now or like mm -hmm. the two most common okay yeah that makes sense so you also wanted to talk today about a couple projects that you were working on so yeah yes let's get into that yeah so we 
I mean, kind of like we've been chatting about where I'd gone, I've been through this recovery and there are so many things that I wish I would have had. And then I feel like had I had those, my recovery would have been significantly shorter and my life would have been you know, very different. Um, and so the social media stuff is fantastic, but I still feel like there needs to be like this structured program that fills in all the gaps of care and is super supportive to like that one-on-one rehab. But we kind of say like we let healthcare providers do what they do best and then we take care of all the rest of it. So we've developed this program that is launching today um, that you can find through social media called Concussion Compass. And it is a monthly membership where you get mentorship. So you have someone that you can reach out to that knows what's up and knows kind of how to steer you. There is office hours. So you come with your questions. We give you kind of the answers. Um, there will be a community off social media. So it'll be, you know, 100% surrounded by people who get it. You can bounce ideas off each other. We moderate it so that all the advice is accurate. You can even post how you're pacing your day. We can give you feedback. Um, we're going to bring on experts so that people have an idea of what those people sound like. And then my favorite aspect is we have research done for you. So if you're struggling with headaches and you're trying to figure out from a million places and ask a million people, we literally have, you know, video lessons with handouts that you can personalize to yourself. We tell you everything you need to know. And by the end, you understand what's happening, why, how it applies to you and action steps that you can take immediately. Um, and then we just put everything else in one place. So we have all the resources for you of here's articles you can give to your family or your doctor. Here's websites that have clinic finders, you know, all that kind of stuff that I can wish I would have had. And then we have tips and tricks. So I'm overstimulated today. What do I do? Click this video. We tell you exactly what to do. So it's really, it just fills in all the gaps of concussion recovery and it's launching this week. So we're doing, you know, buy a month, get a month free. And we were basically able to take what would have been individually, you know, several hundred to thousands of dollars and put it at one low monthly price. So we're really hoping that it helps move the needle for people in recovery and becomes a part of their rehab so they get where they need to go faster and without this confusion and, you know, having support. So that launches today. So come and join us. We would love to have you. Um, There's a ton of other benefits, but it is just we're super excited about it. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that I was... just, I wish I could go back in time and have it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the just, yeah. concussion compass. Right? Yeah. It's concussion compass. So mm-hmm. we're going to help you navigate, see what we did there, <laughs> navigate your injury so that you can get back to life and all the things that matter to you. Okay. And that's Quickly. available on uh, which, which platforms again is that? So you can go to www.concussioncompass.com to register. You can also access it through, I am on Instagram and Facebook at Molly Parker PT. And then my colleague and business partner for this is named Natasha Wilch. Um, She is an um, incredible concussion physical therapist and she runs a multidisciplinary clinic. So you get the two of us together to help guide you through it. It's pretty awesome. But yeah, Yeah, it's where you can find us. That's fantastic. So before we're out of time, I wanted to budget a little bit of time at the end just to give you the opportunity to uh, leave us with any parting words, any you know good advice, anything we may not have hit uh, during the rest of the interview. Yeah, I would just, I mean, I always come back to, for me, concussions are treatable. So if you're at home and you're worried, you know, kind of all the worries, these things are treatable. There's things we can do. So reach out for support, reach out to someone like yourself or myself. And there's people there that, you know, can help get you to where you need to go. And yeah. Fantastic. And the Mm -hmm. concussion compass is available today. So thank you for doing all you do. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being on today. I really appreciate it. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this has been your host from the neuro wellness podcast, Dr. Coppice. Be well.